we've got four main processes that need to happen. We've got pretreatment, where the biomass is, is subjected to heat to, to make it more digestible. We have an enzymatic hydrolysis step, where we break down a polymer into sugars. We have a fermentation step, where those sugars then are fermented into a biofuel, and the last step is recovery of that. Here we've got examples of corn cobs and corn stover. So these are materials that are left over from, from a corn plant uh, after you harvest the grain from it. The gas is actually what's left over after sugar cane is pressed and all of the sugar is recovered from it. So these last two are, are examples that would come from wood type sources. So you've just got raw wood chips and potentially this could also be uh, treated from waste uh, forest trimmings or, or other types of things like that, any sort of waste wood process. And lastly is, is pulp and paper. So there are also streams from a pulp and paper type plant that are, are very amenable to, to these types of, of processes and conversion into biofuels. Plants have essentially evolved to try to keep microorganisms from degrading and getting at the sugars. Lignin is essentially there to, to help prevent that from happening. And that's part of the reason that makes this technology a little bit difficult, is that we've got to deal with this lignin. Because you can imagine if plants were in nature and, and bacteria could easily degrade these sugars, you know, the plants wouldn't make it. So plants have really evolved to try to make this process difficult for us. In those stomachs, there are a lot of different bacteria. And those bacteria will start to secrete enzymes, the same types of enzymes we're going to talk about here and the same types of enzymes that Genencore makes for this industry. It secretes cellulase enzymes to start to break down these polymer chains. And it'll break it down to sugars uh, in the stomach of the cow. So this would take probably two to three days for the material to be broken down this much so that it completely flows. After we have all these sugars generated, now we need to make a biofuel. And to do that, we, we move into a fermentation step where we're going to add a live microorganism that makes ethanol. Okay, In this case, we're talking mostly about ethanol biofuel. So a process that you're probably very familiar with that makes ethanol is fermentation of beer or wine. Okay, If we take wine for an example, we essentially squeeze <coughs> grapes and get sugar out of them. In this case, we've got to take a couple of extra steps to make that sugar. But once we get the sugar from that and add a yeast, the yeast will ferment it to carbon dioxide and to ethanol. And ethanol is the biofuel that we want to recover. And after we generate the sugars from enzymatic hydrolysis, then we can add a yeast and ferment it to ethanol. We want to separate those two processes. So we boil off the ethanol and now we want to separate the lignin from the water so that we can take that lignin and burn it in our boiler to generate the steam and the electricity for a biorefinery plant. So again, a biorefinery should be completely self-sustaining from an energy standpoint. It should be able to produce all the energy that's needed within the system. We're showing that we're extracting oil out of the ground and we're processing that for fuels for a car or we're burning it for other energy sources, electricity and things like that. And as all of those are burnt, it, it's burnt in, in, and converted to CO2 that all goes up into the atmosphere. If we look at a, a renewable cycle, such as, as a biomass process, here we pull the carbon from waste plant type materials that are above the earth and we process those. And we do still produce some CO2, okay? We're making a biofuel that's burning cars. And as the yeast ferment, they also produce some CO2. But the difference is that now our arrows are in balance, okay? Now all the CO2 that's produced by the combustion of this process and the conversion into ethanol where it's burnt as gasoline for cars, all of that CO2 that goes in the atmosphere is taken back up by the plants to be used again in, in a repeating cycle. So now we can generate these biofuels over and over and not net any carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So it's a much more sustainable process than what we're doing today. And we think it's gonna have a lot more benefits all the carbon that we're taking in the biofuels process is being converted to different processes, some of it to CO2 initially, as, as we showed in our demonstration in fermentation. 
Some of it's made into ethanol, which we can use as a biofuel, and then that's combusted in cars. So essentially, if we take all the carbon, the lignin, the cellulose, the hemicellulose that's stored in these plant materials, and ultimately we end up converting it all to CO2, all burnt, but then that CO2 is taken up by the plants to grow the next generation of plants. So all of that CO2 completely cycles back into more lignin, hemicellulose, and cellulose in a plant. The technology is really here today. I mean, we can make cellulosic ethanol today, okay? We passed around flasks, you all got to touch, feel, and smell some of that ethanol being produced in the lab, okay? So the technology is there. There are still some improvements that need to be made, but, but the technology is there today. It's not five years down the road, it's not 10 years down the road. All the processes we talked about here where we've got pretreatment, we've got enzymatic hydrolysis, fermentation and recovery, all those unit operations now need to be brought together in these biorefineries and optimized and, and improved so that these systems can, can compete economically with petroleum today. So we've got some acid pretreatment, we've got uh, ammonia pretreatment, and then we've got some that's just water-based. So all of these would take temperature, okay, usually 100 to 200 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes or something like that to pretreat it. And you see after that, now it looks almost like a mud or something like that, okay, as it goes through and gets pretreated and it's subjected to that heat. And once it's pretreated and we start like this, so this is the same stuff, acid pretreated, okay. After we add some enzyme and, and incubate that at temperature, now this step takes a couple of days because this is a much more complicated substrate than this one. So this one, from the demonstration, it has the lignin in there, it has the cellulose and hemicellulose, so it takes a little longer. But then once you get to that step, you can see just a dramatic difference as it gets liquefied. Yeah, and you can even smell the sugars in there. And then the last step is to take that and, and add a yeast where you can then uh, convert that sugar to ethanol. And you should be able to smell the ethanol in that one.